going to be watching Maccabee, who's going to be playing D.Va. This is King's Row, Silver 2, and it's on Xbox, or console. Hello, I've posted before. I've been looking for help for as D.Va to get into gold. I'm not going to make any excuses. I know the common denominator and a lot of losses, all of your losses, is me, uh, because I generally don't know how to fight against Zarya, who everyone picks after one team fight. Without rolling my team, I'll try to kill her back line. What I need help with, I already know my aim is iffy at best, so tips on positioning and target choice would be great. Uh, thought I would give variety so that my mistakes would be easier to point out. Any help would be appreciated. So uh, there's a victory, a defeat, and a draw here. Uh, I'm going to pick a defeat. And we're going to focus on your core decision making and to a lesser extent mechanics. So let's focus on, on, on King's Row right here. The opposing team does not in fact run Zarya, so, or at least not for the section that I watched. So we are uh, going to be able to watch this with you playing against a Doom. So, uh, yep, Doom comes in, gets hacked, great. Great kill. Um, you're going to lose your Sombra through this, but it's not really your fault. Excellent. But you're still in a 4-4 four four situation. You have short spawn. So your goal right now should be to push aggressively. <laughs> right? Push very aggressively right now because they don't have a tank, and your team does because you are the tank. So you want to push right now really, really, really fast because you want to be able to get kills here until before the Doom comes up, comes back. Unfortunately, your Ana dies. Once the Ana dies, I think that you basically need to stop right now. So I would just chill by the gate and just, just wait. However, soldier's uh, out of position. Your trace is on him. I think this is the right call to dive. Yep, you kill this soldier. Uh, yep, you just chill here. You got plenty of health. Uh, and you're going to rotate up here. And you're going to go after the Widow. Excellent. She doesn't seem to pay attention. She kills your Mercy. Unfortunate. So when you pop this right here, it's very clear that she's, she's going to get away. Like, her supports are right here. So you activate boosters, you should use that the rest of the boosters to fly away. So a good tip for boosters is to not commit with them, like don't turn them off until you're sure that you're where you want to be. Every single boosters should end you either in a high impact position, like someplace you want to be, or it should end you in safety. The problem here is that you end up in neither one of these positions, okay? Your boosters are over, and you're stuck here, not able to shoot anybody because they're all too far away, and you're not in your cover. So as a result, you're going to take some damage here unnecessarily. It's not a lot of damage, but it's a habit of yours that I want to identify now because you need to be thinking that through. Every boosters ends me up either in one, someplace I want to be, like, like someplace dangerous for the enemy where I can blow them up, or it ends me in some place of safety. You're going to receive it back? Okay, great. So, yep, just chill. No need to DM here, okay? So nobody's peeking, so just chill. Wait for your team. Wait for five, then repush. All right, so Tracer's here, right? A good good tip is also look back and see, like, hey, who's who's here? Who's alive, right? So Sombra's here, Tracer's here, Ana's here. Okay, we're still missing a Mercy, so I would just chill right now. I don't need to force this fight, okay? I mean, it, it's okay to go in right now, but, like, they're about to have their fifth faster than you're about to have your fifth. So if possible, I would like to wait, like, a few seconds just for a Mercy to get here, and then I can fight. Because having an extra person makes a massive difference on the fight. But... Let's think here. What do we want to be doing right now? Well, we want to be applying pressure to the opposing team. I can do this from the front, but the thing is, who can I shoot here? The Doom is a bad target for me to shoot because the Doom can always get away at any moment in time. Also, if I pop missiles, he can pop block and he can absorb all the missiles. The Widow is like a reasonable target. I think it's okay to attack the Widow as long as she's here, but she's eventually going to rotate somewhere else. I need to find a way to go after either the DPS or the supports, or potentially touch the point. But. That's just something that I'm always trying to think about here, is how do I be impactful? Going after the Widow right now is good, especially since she's on the hot streak. I would DM right now because your Sombra is extremely low. See? Like, you see how she's super, super low? This is the moment where you see her on your screen, she's like, oh, she's low, you should DM right now to save her. Yep, this is fine. So, let's look at this situation. What should happen? Doom is blocking over here, I don't want to mess with the Doom. You got three people over here, but if I dive them, it's going to be a one on three. Because I'm going to have to go around the corner to fight all three of them, and my team is going to be over there, and they can't help. Line of sight is a massive thing to always be thinking about in Overwatch, especially for tanks. If I go on them right now, I have no help, and even as a tank, I can't beat three people. So this is not an eligible dive target right now. The Widow up here is a possibility. I could fly up here, and I go through here, and I could force the Widow back. That is an option, right? Or, potentially, I just chill for a second and allow my team time to step forwards and then support me in whatever's going to go on. So all these are valuable valid options other than diving them right now, which I do not want to do. Right now, you see how you're trying to trade with them? So you're at 576 health, right, okay? Let's let's look at this. So you're shooting at them. How much damage do you just do? Like 30 maybe? 
but you just lost 200 health because of this. Because you tried the trade with Baptiste and Soldier are really good medium range heroes, and you're a terrible medium range hero, and you're outnumbered here. So you're taking a lot more damage than you are dealing to them. So always be thinking about, hey, am I trading positively? Like, am I doing more damage than I'm taking? Or am I trading negatively, right? Where I'm taking way more damage than I, than I deal. It's not quite that simple because tanks do less damage than other characters, or at least DPS, but it's something to always be thinking about. It's like, look, is what I just did something that's gonna help me win? In this case, no. I've lost health here for no reason. So Doom goes in, and then you're gonna go after the Doom. Oh. <laughs> or go after the, the mini, I guess. I think you're trying to go after Doom. Doom's going to pop block right now. So block is a massive damage reduction. I don't remember it's off hands, but it's like about 75%. So it effectively quadruples his health. So instead of having 123 health, you should look at him as, oh, he actually has like 450 plus health, okay, with the, the reduction. Well, you know, so closer to 500, it's actually 79%. I don't remember if it's actually 75%. But Doom has way more health than you think right now because of the way block works. Not only that, you're going to shoot him nonstop. Based on that, the rest of this game, I don't think you realize that shooting him charges his block. See right now, you see that glowing effect? So if Doom takes 100 mitigated damage while he is blocking, his next punch is much more powerful. It comes out instantly, it does more damage, it stuns longer, and it knockbacks right? Harder. So Doom wants people to shoot him while he's blocking, which means you do not want to shoot him while he's blocking because you solo charge this basically, right? By shooting him right now. And nobody else is shooting him, right? That sleep dart misses. So you're just solo shooting him, charging his punch. Now he's going to waste it anyway going, going out, but I would just know like I think it's really important to understand how other heroes mechanics work. One of the things I talk about is at bronze, Nobody knows how they don't know how their hero works. They don't know how anybody of this other heroes work. At silver, people tend to know what their hero does, but they don't know what other heroes do. And that's the threshold that you're at right now. Where like I think you know how to play Diva, but you don't know what these other heroes in the game do. Like what their gameplay style is, what they want to accomplish, what their abilities do, etc. And that's an important gap and you can just literally just read the wiki to like understand how the other heroes work, but charging the punch is a really really bad sign that you don't actually know how these things work. So, you pressure in right now. Is right now the right time to pressure? Yeah, this is an okay time to pressure. So, I would this is like I would consider like this kind of like a soft dive. I don't want to hard commit here because again, it's around the corner. But I do have my whole team about the support here soon. I'm not gonna drop too low. I have defense matrix. I should be in good shape. So, who do I focus here? Well, I got a tank. I got a DPS. And I got support. As a general rule, you should aim at the support because the support's the one who's healing everyone. So you should shoot the, the, the Baptiste here as opposed to the Soldier or the Doom. And we notice that when you dive in here, right, you're aiming for the Baptiste initially, but then you just go for the Soldier and then you go for the Doom. This is a mistake, just aim for the Baptiste. Right, just aim for the Baptiste right now and then DM. Once you get about half health, you should just exclusively DM from here. All right, so you're gonna DM out, that's fine. He's gonna punch you, no problem. So now you've gone too far back because you're gonna wanna re-engage soon once you get healed. And you notice you're breaking LOS of your Ana by going too far. You should only be playing out heat, like to this corner, not this corner. This is what, be, what would be considered going two corners back. This is the first corner for cover. This is the second corner, right? And then if you even went even further, this is arguably like three corners back. You don't need to be this far back. You want to stay close to the front because whenever you're being shot at, that means your team isn't being shot at. If you're this far back, no one's going to shoot you. They're going to shoot your team instead, which is how your team dies. So that's something to think about is, again, I don't want to go too far back. Just one corner is 99% of the time the correct retreat path. So Life Reaver's going to die here. Great. Another good example of you want to not overcommit, or rather, you know, you want to toggle your boosters off too early. So the Life Reaver's dead here. You're clearly flying up to kill him, but now you still have half of your boosters. So now you decide, where do I want to go? Well, I got a decent amount of health here, so I could aggress, or I could fly back to this corner and get healed up. Either one of those is fine, but stopping here is a mistake. Because now you see you're too far away from anyone and you're not in cover. So again, thinking about where your boosters end up, right? That's really, really important as D.Va. So you notice right here, Doom is applying a lot of damage to your Ana. If you'd flown back and just DM'd your Ana, she'd be totally safe right now instead of being potentially killed in this moment. All right, so. You decide not to focus the Doom, which is fine, right? You're, you're going to focus the backline right now. Number one, 
these missiles are activated, you are way too far away. See, look, look how many of the missiles are going to miss here. So, let's watch these, okay? Miss, so we hit one of six, maybe? So, I think we hit two of, uh, it's like 16 or so? That's really bad. Now, why did we miss that many? We missed that many because we're too far away from the soldier. And I actually have a very quick guide for this, but the short answer is you should never use missiles this far away. What you do is you fly into them, then activate missiles when you're like this close, then you bump them so they move backwards in a straight line, and you use the missiles and your cannons to kill them. It's a very basic diva technique that I think you need to learn if you want to try climbing, because this is a fairly straightforward kill. Now. That's the first thing is your missile usage and the fact that you're too far away. Number two is, again, target the support here, not the soldier. <laughs> really, really important. Target the support here because the, the Baptiste can keep the soldier alive basically through all the things that you're doing. You should go after the Baptiste. The soldier's also in this heal radius, so he's healing for like 35 health a second. You should just kill the Baptiste right now. The Baptiste is also hacked by the Sombra, and she was focusing the Sombra. So you're going to go over here. You get super low. Right? You're going to hold DM, but you notice that, that you start shooting right now, but you're extremely low. You just need to hold DM and get around the corner, and then you're good. But you're going to go here, you're going to lose your mech. This is bad. Pretty much every single time you lose your mech, you've done something wrong. I mean, nothing super exciting happening here. Your team's going to wipe. Okay, next push. So, Reaper's going to die here. Okay, great. So, we've, we've traded. So, we trade DPS. That's fine. So, I want to aggress right now. Okay, you get punched, that's fine. Just walk forwards. You see how you're walking backwards right now? You need to walk forwards because now it's a four and four and we're in good shape. Doom gets hacked, great, blow him up. Yep, shoot him. Okay, he pops ulti, that's fine. So you cannot matrix his ultimate, that doesn't do anything. But he's gonna punch right now. I immediately turn and I and I matrix my Ana here. Why? Number one, my Ana is low. Number two, how does Doom's gameplay loop work? Doom has two movement abilities that also damage. He has his rocket punch, and he has his seismic slam, right? And then he has block. So the gameplay loop for Doom is one movement skill in, right? Either punch or slam, and then either one movement skill out, or if there's no CC, he can use the other movement skill to apply more damage, and then he holds block, okay? So for Doom, I'm always tracking how many movement skills has he used. So in this scenario, he just punched, right? So he still has his slam and he still has his block. Now, when Doom is trying to kill a target, he uses his movement skills and then he follows up with his cannon, which actually does a lot of damage at close range. So with Ana this low, he could conceivably kill the Ana with the with his hand cannon. Now, I would expect that he's going to use a movement skill back in and then try to shoot the Ana, or he could potentially shoot from here. See, now he uses a movement skill back in, and I bet he's going to target the Ana right now with the cannon. So I need to DM the, the Ana right now to make sure she doesn't die. Now, he does not actually aim at the Ana. He aims at the wall because this is Silver 5, but that's what generally I would be expecting in this situation, and that's what you need to be prioritizing. Notice he's blocking right now, and even though you're nano, you're still doing like no damage to him because block has such a strong damage mitigation tool. Okay, so we covered that, that dive and sort of like how to peel the dive or what you should have been doing there. The next thing here is bomb. As a general rule, do not throw bomb to try to kill enemies. I know it seems crazy because it's a huge explosion that kills enemies, but it does not scale well at all once you start going up through the ranks because bomb takes forever to explode and it's very telegraphed and almost never will people die to bomb once you start going up to the ranks. Like in GM, I don't know if I kill one person in in like 10 bomb throws, right? Like it's so rare that someone will die to bomb. Instead, use bomb as a second life. Use it as an opportunity to play aggressively knowing that you can pop bomb, re-mech, and continue applying pressure. So this bomb happens to kill the Doom here, but I would note that there is literally no reason for this for this Doom to die right now. So you pop bomb here, okay? So you pop bomb, it's in the sky, all he has to do is walk around this corner and he's good. But instead, he jumps forwards and dies. 
I'm telling you, this only happens at the lowest ranks of Overwatch where people don't understand how the mechanics work. Because he's probably like, I don't know when the bomb explodes. I haven't played against Diva very much. Like, maybe it explodes instantly. Like, I don't know what is going through his head, but it doesn't... There's no reason for him to have died to this bomb. So you would have wasted this bomb completely, this ultimate completely, if the Doom hadn't done what he just did. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't use it as a killing mechanism, typically, there are exceptions to this rule, use it as a second life. So for example, I'm here, I can dive into him, fight, 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 okay, great, they demech me, I pop bomb, they all have to run away, I step around the corner, remech, and I apply pressure again. It is very hard to deal with a D.Va that is two lives. You can apply a tremendous amount of pressure on the opposing team. Alright, you're gonna kill the soldier, great, excellent. So, let's let's think for a second, alright? Evaluate what is happening in front of me. Okay, this is a life weaver here. I'm too far away to do any damage, by the way. Even at this range, you're only gonna do like 20 damage a second to the life weaver. You're probably gonna do like 50 damage a second to the to the uh, Baptiste. You're probably doing like 75 damage a second to, to Reaper at this range. But right now, there's a Reaper in my face, and there's a Baptiste, and there's a life weaver. The Baptiste is already gonna be doing like 100 damage a second plus to me at this range. The Reaper is going to be doing like 200 damage a second to me at this range. So between these two heroes, I'm going to take something like 300 damage a second. I have to Matrix right now. And I know this is tough, Barry, because like you're relatively new to D.Va maybe, but I see this and I'm like, I'm in grave danger right now. I need to immediately hold Matrix because I'm literally going to get demeft in like one second, right? So Matrix is good. Excellent. So let's back out of here. Good, 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 right? All right, Reaper's reloading. Am I being healed? Not being healed? I fly away, okay? Because I don't want to continue this fight here because again, he trades way better than I do. Now, the Reaper decides to not chase, which is interesting. He really could have chased you here, but that's fine. So you're gonna fly back in. I would note that the Reaper is still gonna be on your flank. So you want to end up someplace where you're not near the Reaper. So you have two options. Option number one is fly up here and get the Life Weaver. You probably don't have enough boost to get that. Option two is go for the Baptiste, which is actually a better option here. Great, excellent. But you notice that you stop short. So you don't want to stop here. Like you actually toggled it off a little early. You want to stop as close to the Baptiste as possible, then activate missiles and then just blow them up. Right? So you're like a little too far away. If you're just a little bit closer, you'd be in better shape. Baptiste gets pulled, tree gets popped, okay, fine. So focus one target here and kill them, right? Tree heals for about 43 health a second. So it's significant, but it's not like like it's not like transcendence, right? Transcendence, like it's almost impossible to kill somebody through trans trance, but you can definitely kill somebody through tree. So just focus one target, ideally the one that the rest of your team are shooting, and then kill them. In this situation, the Baptiste has full health. I don't want to shoot the Baptiste. The Life Weaver is at half health, and he's next to two of my teammates. Right? Arguably, I think there's a third one here, but two of my teammates shoot the, the, the Life Weaver right now. That should be your priority. Great, excellent. You don't have missiles, unfortunate. So window gets popped. As soon as window gets popped, you should pretty much always pop uh, defense matrix initially because Baptiste only pop mate window when they have a killable target in range. So the most dangerous moment for window is the first two seconds because people were not expecting window to get popped. So you need to matrix the first two seconds of window. As soon as this goes up right now, pow, right here, I pop matrix. And now I hold matrix over everybody, right? Just wiggle around here and make sure they can't shoot anyone because the Baptiste is going to use this to kill the Sombra, who I think walks in front of him. Yeah, she literally walks in front of him. <laughs> but that's like kind of the moment that you should be using to like defense matrix there. So with window, I think it's unlikely you're going to win this fight, but I think playing to the side is okay. You've Baptiste has already killed two. I think you just matrix and leave. I think this is a reset. Uh, you decide to re-aggress. As a general rule, never fly in front of the window. The window does enormous amounts of damage. Doubling damage is huge. So you're going to lose your mech here. Yeah, this is a mistake. You need to understand like when is a fight lost and then, you know, get out or, or die or whatever it ends up being. So Reaper's going to die here. Excellent. Not really anything you did about that, but you're going to burn the Baptiste down. Okay, so Baptiste got, got pulled. Continue aggressing. Good. No, you're not going to address. Okay, so I think this is clearly a moment where you should aggress the, the Baptiste. Because you have mostly enough health, the Baptiste just got pulled, you just saw him use Lamp at a minimum, right? Lamp and Regen Burst. So fly up here and start blowing up the Baptiste. Because the good thing about here is that this is also going to be an LOS of your supports as they come up. So you're going to get plenty of help while you're up here. But if you just sit on point, they can just shoot at everyone on point. Ideally, they should be shooting at your supports. Um, but they don't. 
I know you're going to cap this anyway, but the correct thing to do would have been to go high ground here and then to fight them. All right, so that covers first point. Um, I think there's one more thing I want to note here as we advance. Like, we were just going to die. Okay, soldier, it's fine. Just chill in. All right, here. So, when Doom pops ulti, stay out of this ring. Because <laughs> this ring actually does 300 damage, FYI. So, it does a lot of damage. So, a good moment after you get punched right there, immediately activate Matrix. Because people are looking, activate Matrix again right now. Because people are looking to try to follow up the punch damage. See this helix? That could have demeched you. And you almost get demeched right now anyway. <laughs> very, very lucky to not get demeched right now. Doom punches in. Okay. Does Doom have any cooldowns? I don't think so. No, he's still slammed. He's still slammed. He's still slammed. We didn't see slam. All right, Doom's going to die. We want to aggress because we got health. I saw the soldier going through library right now. See? So right now, I see the soldier going through library. There's no other way for him to get out. So what I want to do is I want to fly over here, and I want to sit in this doorway and bump him in because that guarantees a kill because he has no way to get away. But you see how you have boosters right now and you're not flying? And now you fly. The soldier waits. You still have the opportunity to trap him in the room, but you go past him. And now you're ignoring him. Again, if you just turn in and you trap the soldier in the room, it's an instant kill. This is a really good example of what D.Va is so good at. You can punish people who are out of position because you have an extraordinary amount of mobility. right? You have the most flexible mobility in the game because you can go in any single direction every four seconds. Um, arguably, Doom is comparable to you, but like I think that in terms of like pure flexibility, D.Va has the most flexibility, just not as fast or as far. So things like that you need to be looking for is, look, it's an automatic, even if I do no damage, if I literally just trap him in this room with a tracer and I just go AFK and take my hands off my mouse and keyboard, he still dies, or controller, he still dies here. Like he literally cannot survive here if you just sit in this doorway and body block him from getting out. So that's the kind of read that you want to be doing as D.Va in order to like kind of level up your gameplay. All right, let's uh, jump to the kind of the end of the game. So your team pushed all the way to third point. And then what's going on? This, oh, you guys just right at the end. Okay, so let's let's focus. I don't want to cover the Ryan gameplay at all. So let's cover the last Diva life. Just want to make sure there's not another. Okay. So here we are. We're in decent shape, right? They got three ultimates. We got two ultimates, so they have a little bit of alt advantage. They do a Symmetra here. Don't mess with the Symmetra. As a general rule for Diva, do not fight Symmetra until you're ready to kill her. So right now. Like, if she's up close like this, you could kill her. So just fly behind her, bump her in, and then she dies here. Another good example of thinking through, like, when you can kill somebody, right, when they're out of position. But they pop window, so the response to popping window here, as a reminder, window, most dangerous, first two seconds after window, because then people don't have time to take cover. Hold matrix and just walk out of LOS of the window and then contest this cart when it gets closer to the point. That's all you want to do right now, especially since you're down one. Just keep it simple. So you see how right now you're turning your back to the window and not matrixing, which allows them to continue apply pressure to your team. This is not good. The closest safe corner is this corner right here, not this one. This is too far back. So just play one corner up in this situation. There's a sim over here. I would not take this fight, especially with no health. Yeah. This is a good example of like, you just don't understand like how the trade works. So Sim does 60 damage a second, but after I think every, every like second of charge time, she goes up to 120 damage a second and 180 damage a second. But even at 60 damage a second, when you fly up here, she's gonna kill you in six seconds. The thing is, can you kill her faster than that? Especially since you're getting shot in the back, you're gonna get shot by I think uh, like a widow or something. Yeah, you see, you see that shot right there? Something shoots you for like 100 damage in the back. Plus the turrets are doing a small amount of damage to you. Now you're 180 health and you've made a terrible mistake because you see how you don't even get close to killing her and you're gonna get demeched. Demeching right now is losing the fight. Losing mech right now virtually guarantees that you cannot contest this point, right? So this is the kind of thing where you need to think, okay, look, I'm already at half health. There's a Symmetra in the back, but like I don't have the resources to deal with her right now. And also a good reason why if you don't step in front of the window, you don't have this problem. I don't have the reasons to deal with her. She's just not my problem right now to deal with. Just sit here, right? Get healed, and then, you know, do whatever you need to do after that. 
But this Symmetra in the back, there's only so much you can do at any moment in time. This is a very, very bad engagement, and you need to know that before you engage. And a huge part of that just comes through experience, right? You know, I think once again, if you run into another situation in the future where you're see a Symmetra at full health, and you have 300 health, you're probably not going to fly into her because you're going to remember this and be like, oh, yeah, that didn't work. And that's just a function of experience of playing the game. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Um, again, I think we covered a lot of stuff about mechanics. I think we covered a lot of stuff about positioning. I think we covered a lot about like target priority, especially like, going after the supports more, when to matrix, how to react to certain things, how to play against the Doom. So hopefully, you know, the sum of all this is, is helpful.